What's up guys, Noor here and welcome to Book of Showtime Chapter 52. As always, if you have a topic you'd like me to cover, be sure to leave it in the comment section down below or any way you can reach me on social media or the Book of Showtime Discord. In Chapter 51, we took a look at the standout games of 2023 and while it was a benchmark year for the industry, there's plenty of things to be disappointed about. So in today's chapter, I will be going over the biggest disappointments of 2023 starting with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Modern Warfare 3 is the absolute undisputed worst Call of Duty of all time, full stop. For starters, it's easily the worst campaign in the series, not even a debate. Black Ops Cold War and Black Ops 3 had some rough campaign modes, but Black Ops 3 was more just a bloated plot with not many memorable characters or moments. It wasn't terrible and it had co-op which is always cool, not to mention the set pieces and gameplay were really solid, so it is a good game to play with a friend but just overall it's very forgettable. Black Ops Cold War, which we had originally said was the worst Call of Duty, it had a decent story, but the way the twist was revealed and the silent protagonist really undid the entire campaign. Plus, it wasn't really that memorable, but it still had some fun moments and notable missions, so it wasn't a complete wash. Modern Warfare 3, on the other hand, abysmal. No signature missions, way too short, and Makarov wasn't half the villain he was in the original Modern Warfare trilogy. And the story technically wasn't finished either, which is always a disappointment. Modern Warfare 2 had one of the best campaigns in Call of Duty history. Every mission had some depth and flavor, and the characters were compelling, and the story had a solid ending. Obviously, it was left open to set up Warzone and Modern Warfare 3, but the ending still stood on its own. There was a big bad, and you stopped him. Modern Warfare 3, the missions were just extremely forgettable, and it's a shame because the last two Modern Warfare games had some impressive standout levels, and for them to just be able to pull that off with COD as old as it was was fantastic. Modern Warfare 3 had these open combat missions, which those things were boring and they just sucked. They were they really just meant, hey, you can go stealth for loud. We kind of don't care. There's no true open-ended aspect to these missions like Sledgehammer pitched. The multiplayer was mid, like legit mid, not like bad mid, you know, just middle of the road. The maps were good, which of course you're bringing them from the OG Modern Warfare 2, so one of the best Call of Duties of all time, but not having a 10v10 playlist at launch was a mistake. And some of the aesthetic changes, like having Rundown be at high noon instead of dusk, that was just strange to me. But the skill-based matchmaking was horrible this year. I felt it was fine in Modern Warfare 19, I felt it was fine in Modern Warfare 2, and I never saw all of the hatred, but here, oh goodness, it reared its ugly head. The unlock system was strange too, as you had to do dailies to unlock weapons and grenades, and I've actually seen tweets of people hitting the cap, the level cap, and not even having basic things like stun grenades unlocked. Like, it makes no sense to me. The zombies, I really, really wanted to like it. I really did, but only having 45 minutes to play is just so stupid. <laughs> you know, it's just dumb. Zombies was always about the endurance aspect to me, about bulking up for the later rounds and seeing how far you can go. And you don't get that here. You have to play the game multiple times to get a stacked kit, and you have to load in with said stacked kit to be able to jump into the higher regions. And similar to Black Ops Cold War, it has no identity of its own. You just play on the Warzone map. Modern Warfare 3 just rotted on my PS5 for a couple weeks before I finally uninstalled. I think after two weeks, I was done, and that was like the earliest I think I ever checked out on a Call of Duty, like ever. <laughs> At least the others had something going for them, but Modern Warfare 3, it just does not hit for me on any level. Moving on, the Game Awards. Man, what a mess of a show this was. While the live performances were stellar, and I agree with pretty much all the award winners, the trailers were largely forgettable outside of the Sega announcement, which can we get, can we get some of that? <laughs> can we get those games quick, please? <laughs> but the one thing that really, really rubbed me the wrong way was the treatment of the award winners. I think it was extremely disrespectful that these developers who spent so much time and put everything into these games didn't get more time to speak when they won, especially considering that some of these developers like Sam Lake, you know, the GOAT, <laughs> they don't natively speak English. They're gonna need some more time to get their feelings out there. And the fact that they had Christopher Judge, who had his long, boring speech last year come out and make it cute about the whole situation, and he even took an odd shot at Modern Warfare 3, which I know I just spent a whole segment of this video bashing it, I actually thought it was out of place, even if it was true, I just didn't find the humor in it, especially in this situation where this whole event is being billed as a celebration of gaming. And the fact that they were also telling devs to quote, please wrap it up, that's just not okay. The Game Awards is not on cable, it's being streamed on Twitch, it's being streamed on YouTube and all over the internet, it's not broadcast on cable. 
Why are you scared of Overrun? You're telling me the potential 15 minutes longer the show might go is gonna hurt someone somewhere? I just, I, it doesn't make sense to me. I guess we need more time for Muppet segments and for Hideo Kojima to talk about nothing for 15 minutes. Seriously, they could have accomplished that entire Kojima segment in a much shorter time frame, but since Keely and Kojima are friends, it's like, hey, we gotta do this whole drawn out segment. Give me a break. I already didn't care much for the awards. It's just a big commercial, but I felt obligated to watch it because of Book of Showtime, and man, it was not the celebration of gaming they painted itself out to be. Next up, 2023 Mets. <laughs> hey, you guys know things outside of gaming can let you down, right? The 2023 Mets entered the season with expectations only matched by its payroll, the largest in MLB. But early on, those bad losses hit, and I was fine with that until about mid-May or so, because I always say, let's get the bad losses out of the way early in any sport, get the bad losses out of the way early. But the bad losses didn't stop, and a lot of players just never performed up to their standards, or they got hurt, and it was just a mess. Mets went from this dominant 2022 campaign that saw them win 100 plus games, to being sellers at the deadline in 2023. And as of this recording, it appears that 2024 will be a retool and reset year as the 2025 free agent class looks a lot more appealing, which, you know, I'm fine with that. <laughs> but here's to hoping that in a few months we're actually looking at a more enjoyable Mets team. At least give me some meaningful September games. Before we wrap up, let's take a look at what the community has to say. Sithy says Starfield. Is it strange to anyone how highly anticipated Starfield was just to be like a pure afterthought within a couple of months? I played about an hour of Starfield and thought, wait a minute, I don't like Bethesda RPGs, what am I doing? So I just went on to other things. I'll just wait for the anniversary edition in 10 years like I did with Skyrim. Also, I'm at the point in my life where, listen, if a first person shooter is not 60 frames, I'm not playing it. Vinny says, my bank account balance. In all seriousness though, I don't really get disappointed by media very often, so this is a really tough run. I guess being disappointed that we went another year without a new F-Zero is the closest we're going to get to a disappointment for me. First off, Vinny is lying. She'd be stacking money off her heart, but I feel that. I was actually sick last year, and I was like broke habitually. <laughs> Even my PayPal account was negative at one point. All jokes aside though, do you guys think that F-Zero will ever come back? Which, that can be said about any IP that gets Smash representation. F-Zero, Earthbound, Star Fox, why don't we see these characters get a new game? This is why I always have some hatred for Nintendo. They got the deepest backlog of IPs, and still it's the same characters getting love consistently. Make it make sense. Ben says, Cody losing to Roman at WrestleMania 39 and Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Yeah, the Cody vs. Roman match ending was probably the most surprising thing I've ever seen in years in wrestling. We all swore that Cody was walking out of SoFi Stadium with 40 pounds of gold around his waist, and when that three count hit, the energy, man, the energy was just sapped right out of our Discord call. <laughs> we were all stunned. As for Jedi Survivor, I honestly forgot it came out last year. It just didn't have the magic that Fallen Order did, and while I tried to give the game a chance, I just tapped out after about 7 or 8 hours. It was a shame because Jedi Fallen Order was really great. And finally, Matt says, honestly, WWE 2K23. It was when I realized that they are too involved with being a simulation game compared to an arcade simulation mix. I'm sure the AEW game as well, but you couldn't convince me to play that. Yeah, the AEW game looks rough, and the way the DLC is being handled, they're charging like 12 bucks a character, which is just ridiculous. I, I, I don't like that. But I enjoyed WWE 2K23, but I almost played it exclusively with my friends and civil rights activists Ben and Tyler. But after the first month or so, the servers kind of went to heck, and now online was unplayable last I checked. We haven't, and an emphasis on we because they don't invite me anymore, but we haven't played 2K together since Mania season. I said in my 2K24 wishes that I would love for the game to have a beta, and there's still time to put one out. Also, let me know down below who you would want to see on the cover of 2K24. It's probably going to be Cody, which I'm totally fine with. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below what were your biggest disappointments of 2023. Inshallah, I will see you in the next chapter.